بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله my name is Yusuf Estes and I'm very happy to be a part of what they're calling today the new system for getting the message of communication of Islam to the people via the various forms of communication currently we have over 2,400 websites under one roof all for Islam and the English language Alhamdulillah. Of course, it didn't come fast, didn't come easy, but these are important things to work on and build from. Additionally, and we're very excited about it, especially right now, celebrating our third year of broadcasting Guide Us TV all across the United States and Canada on satellite, around the world on the apps. You can pull out your smartphone. By the way, it doesn't work on your dumb phone. It has to have a smartphone. But on the smartphone, you get that word, Guide Us, like it's one word. Download it and you can watch Guidance TV anywhere in the world. I know because I've been around the world, checked it out to make sure it works. In addition to that, we have added antennas now. You can go to New York and watch us free over the air TV, regular antenna. And that's an amazing forward step for us because we've never had anything like that for Islam, anytime. Also in Dallas, Fort Worth, we just added that one, the one in Los Angeles. Also in where I'm living now in Columbus, Ohio. Very soon, inshallah, to be in Denver and Tampa, Florida, and hopefully in Chicago area. These are the things that we're working on currently. And how does this all work? Well, one of the things you have to understand is something called the Internet. And the Internet is a vital part of communication in today's world. Originally, when the Internet was set up, it was more or less for the people who were in the scientific areas and laboratories and military, they were very interested in that and that kind of communication back 30 years ago, believe it or not. And when I first experimented with it, I never dreamed what it would turn into. But now today we see that every child, we're talking about children today, are using computers, which when I grew up, a computer was something that, oh, you, you couldn't even imagine how big it was. And today we carry computers in our pocket. We call them cell phones. But they do a lot more than phones. Some of them do a lot better with the internet than they do with the telephone. But all of this adds up to something important, that the Muslims today need to focus heavily on working, networking together, social networking, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. All of these things are a vital part of the communication system. And we very much use those ourselves. Even though I have these many websites, I still utilize the networking. Google has attempted to get into some of the areas as well, and they've done pretty good with that. YouTube is a vital part of what's going on. We have our own form for Islam called Tube Islam, but we don't exclude the others because it would be no benefit in cutting ourselves off. But when it comes to, and I'm going to give you this example, when it comes to going to YouTube, for instance, you want to tell somebody, go hear about a certain speech, maybe Suhaib Webb, Yasser Qadi, something like this. You'd like for them to go to the YouTube, check it out. But when they do, on the right side of the page, here's all kind of opportunities to go to other things that may or may not really be so good for Islam. Some outright attacks against Islam. Then what are you going to do? So that's where you can use Tube Islam because it's exclusive. It's only about Islam, only about Muslims, and only upbeat. We don't attack groups within Islam. We don't attack other religions. We present what we have and many different ways. We have so many scholars and readers of the Quran or Qaris of the Quran along with just average people who want to put up their own videos. They put them up there on Tube Islam. Anybody can join and be a member but everything that goes out is observed, carefully investigated before we put it up. That way we make sure it doesn't have any problems in the teaching, any problems in the way that things are presented, or even technical issues that need to be corrected before it goes out over the air. Sometimes we even contact the people who upload to our website and ask them, maybe they'd like to put it on Guide Us TV. After all, you know, well, it's one of the best sources is from yourself, from your own uh, jama'ah. Now, one of the things they talk about is cloud. If you're not familiar with the term, cloud is really just a server that's there, it's shared by others, and it makes it real easy to communicate back and forth. And at first when we started using this, I wasn't real sure about that. The first experiences with the cloud on some of the servers, they had some technical issues. But now, mashallah, that what they've been doing 
on a big scope uh, has really made a big difference. And I think that the more that we share together, grow together with it, it's good. Let's talk about what's up. So a lot of people heard about what's up. That's a very unique way to communicate around the world because you can call anybody, you can be in contact with them. And I use it around the clock because I work basically 24 hours a day. So I got the phone laying here in the hotel room. It goes off, click, boom, I can answer somebody. Just in the last 24 hours, we helped three or four people come to Islam through that particular application. I don't have one of those set up yet in, in uh, our system, but I do have something called Chat Islam, and that's pretty good. We get about 40, maybe 50 people per month coming through on that. And Chat Islam, we started about 12 years ago, and what the idea was to actually use it kind of like a broadcast thing. We have scholars, presenters, reciters who come in on a regular basis. And now this one is pretty neat for Islam because we use women as well. Now, oftentimes women don't get much of a chance to get out and go someplace. But if they can do something from home, that's pretty easy. And this has been a big blessing to us because the women, actually, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, they outshine us. They do such a great job. When they get busy on something, <laughs> they put us in the shade. And the sisters have their own part of it. One, it's called islamswomen.com slash chat, or they can go straight to chat Islam and find the women's section. They put their own passwords on there because there's some things they like to talk in private with each other. They teach the Quran. They help each other. And sometimes they come over and help the men get their act together too. So this chat Islam has been a big boon to the whole effort of what we've been doing in Islam as far as presenting it. Another aspect that we've been using is with our television is to have these uh, phone numbers. When somebody is broadcasting live, you can actually call in on an 800 number and talk to the sheikh while he's broadcasting. You get answers and you feel like this is really exciting because it's not just typing or it's not just sending a letter to somebody, but he's talking to you and he's answering you specifically on your question. Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, we have Kareem Abu Zaid from Denver, Colorado. On the weekends, we have Imam Shemsi Ali, who is the, also the Imam for the United Nations. They have uh, um, those, the Imam in South Carolina, which is Mutar Sabri, coming with us on some of the live programs. Myself, whenever we're in the different communities, we go live. Harun Amin comes to us from Detroit. We have Abu Hafsa who comes from Toronto with us. And uh, by the way, all of them are with us right now on this trip that we're taking. And it's just been so exciting because the people come out and they get to meet the people that they see on TV and be a part of what we're doing. And all of that, when you add it up, this is the way you bring it together. You bring communities together, you get people's minds together, and we can offset a lot of the misconceptions we have about our own religion, as well as help those who are not Muslim or maybe even anti-Islam, suddenly they see a different picture. And I don't want to give too many examples, and this is a general talk that we're having right now, but there is one example I'd like to mention, though, and that's Islamophobia, as they call it, or the fear of Islamic Sharia. And while I was out in California one time, they asked me to speak about it to a group of Jews and Christians. And I asked them, I, I joke around with them in the beginning, I always play with people to relax them, you know. And then I asked them, if I bring up a subject, I would just like to talk to you about words. And I'll say a word, tell me if it's a good or bad word. The word is Sharia. And they said, mm. everybody was saying bad. There were some Muslims there. They even said it was bad. I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? So then I said, okay, that's, that's cool. You, 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 Sharia is bad. I said, now who knows the word Torah, Torah or Torah, good or bad word? Now, the Christians were looking around like, uh, not sure, but when they saw the Jewish give the thumbs up, yes, good word, good word, then they joined right along, and again, we saw Muslims do the same thing. In this case, the Muslims were right. Torah is what? And then I told them, by the way, guys, you just contradicted yourself. They were like, huh? I said, Torah means what? They said, that's God's law. I said, uh-huh, and that's what Sharia means, the same thing. So we didn't know that. I said, you know, this is the problem. 
You need to, as we say in Texas, you need to get the hay down so the goats can eat it. You have to make it simple for the people. Translate, interpret, and bring it out there so that people have a chance to get a better understanding of it. Put it down on their level. We don't need to, to bring to them college-level English. We don't need to bring to them the kind of jargon that's expected amongst various, like say, engineers, scientists, technicians. No, talk to the people just where they're at. Especially consider this, the vast majority of the people using the internet today, especially when you go to YouTube, Twitter, and especially in Facebook, these are all kids under 20 years old. And they don't have strong command of the English language, but they use a lot of slang and jargon. So if we work with that and present it that way, keep it simple, keep it on their level, you'd be surprised what happens. And we're, we really need to focus on the next generation. And the next generation, they're very much into the phones, the cell phones, the iPads, iPods, iPad. No, wait a minute, that's another. <laughs> but you get the idea. The smartphones are the thing. So if this is what we're seeing, and right now we have about 22% of those who access our work are coming from these handheld devices. So there's, there's no option in this. We've got to put Islam on apps. If you've got a website, think about apps. If you have something that uh, can be accessed through the internet in any way, shape, or form, think about the apps. And an example that Mass Ikna did this very same thing with the event in December 2013. They put an app so people coming to the convention, con conference could look at it and not only take care of their regular things such as book your rooms, things like that, but knowing when the speakers are going to be there. And if there's a change, it could be updated right away. And okay, that speaker is going to be in this room instead of that room. Timing is going to be different. It even give you weather reports, things like that to really help you. Those are the things that people are going to be looking for in the future. They're going to expect it from us, and this is what we need to be prepared to do. Well, that's it, and I want to give you this last little piece of advice that comes to us uh, from our prophet, peace be upon him. And when they asked him, tell us something about this deen of Islam that only you could tell us. He summed it up with such a short statement. It's embarrassing to me to realize that I just spoke all this time and didn't say as much as he said in this statement. Qul amant thumastaqim. He said to us, say, I believe in Allah, and then be steadfast on what you said. And that really sums it all up, doesn't it? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Hu ala di jannah muslimin.